How's it going guys? I'm your host Carbon Gaming. Welcome back to this week's Adventure Quest video and for today's video we are going to be covering skills 11 to 15 for Necromancer and boy I am very excited. A lot of people uh, have messaged me on Discord and also commented on my previous videos uh, telling me that the new Necromancer update is great asking me to go ahead and check it out. So I haven't had the time to check it out yet but without further ado let's, let us go ahead and do it in this video. Okay so we need to do the quests first for the uh, part, skills 11 to 15 all right so let's go necromancer training and this one has no story i believe the story part only comes in on number 15 so that's what we'll do and we'll just switch over and nuke everything because these are uh, low level mobs so we don't really have to we don't really want to waste too much time uh, on them one by one okay so we'll call up my doomquake minions 40 percent water i think we should still be able to one shot this no, not one shot. Close though. Okay, we are going to need one more turn, but that's fine. <coughs> right, so there's a lot of uh, synergies that I've seen. You guys have sent me uh, a lot of short clips of how you're using it to synergize. The damage potential of the new skills are absolutely insane after looking at what you guys have sent me. So yeah, I'm very excited to be uh, able to see it today for myself. Okay, I don't have the best, what do you call it, items, uh, synergy items. I am missing the Dark Booster uh, pet and guest. I'm not sure if there's a pet. I I know for sure there's a guest. But yeah, that's the Zor Zorbeck guest or something like that. The one that boosts your dark damage. But I do have most of the other good items like Power Gauntlet, your Blood Contract, your uh, Polala, all that. So we do have all that kind of stuff to boost the damage. And of course, we have our Terror Set in order to eat fear. There, You can eat fear and bleed, I think, with the new skills. I have the unofficial info subs pulled up on my second screen over here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at those ones. Uh, I start going through the skills, okay? So it's a set of a few battles first. After we get through these few battles, we will be able to go ahead and look at the skills. Do you guys actually want to see me go through all these uh, grinding? Because for my MQ video, I know nobody likes to see grinding. What about for AQ? I know this is not a particularly long grind. Or do you guys just want to see me, you know, touch on the story? Like for the story quest, I'll play through it. But for non-story quests, I'll just skip through it. Let me know what you guys want to see down in the comments below. Well, technically, we are already over 3... We are like, after we are done with this video, it's like three quarters of the way through it. Wow, wow, very, very high roll. That's super lucky right there. Eh, I'm not too worried since we can probably just, uh, since we have a plus 50 from the intellect stat. And on top of that, we can just, you know, do our, uh, you can just defy it with, select, with SP if we need to. I think we have enough SP. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, we're already three quarters of the way through with uh, this already, so maybe I'll just leave the grinding in until the uh, entire thing finish. Because it doesn't, I guess it doesn't matter, there's really only the last part to go through, but let me know, okay? If you guys want to see it, then I'll take it out for skill 16 to 20. But if you guys want to see it, then I'll just leave it in. Shouldn't take too long, okay? So one part took me about, like, what, three minutes, non-story part, so maybe I have to do four parts. So that's like 12 minutes. The story part, maybe a little longer, I'll give it 10 minutes, 22 minutes, and then uh, we'll do the going through thing, uh, the going through of the skills and all that, which should take about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's about the standard duration of my uh, AQ videos if you add everything up. So yeah, I guess it's fine if I add the grinding in, but you guys can just skip ahead in the video if you guys don't want to watch it. I'm, uh, it's totally fine by me. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, Mitch. And let's do this. Done. Five Z tokens, always appreciated. And I'm not sure if there is some sort of <laughs> system that prevents you from getting Z tokens if you already have a bunch because. I have not gotten a single donation yet. I do not know why. 
The donation contest has been going on for a very long time now. I've been playing quite religiously the past few times, but still no, uh, no, what do you call it? No donation whatsoever, not even the smallest denomination. I did not even get that. I don't know if I'm just unlucky or maybe they just didn't allow people have over 100,000 Z tokens to get any more donations, which is fair. To be honest, it's fair, but you know, I would like to see a little bit of something. <laughs> not that I need it, but maybe, you know, I can pass it on uh, just to show people that, hey, Korriban donated to you. Woo, but... <laughs> No, I did not even get any of that. Uh, that's unfortunate. I'm thinking if I should, uh, if I want to take part in a contest in the future, because I do have, uh, including my main, I do have four Sky Castle estates stacked up just to, uh, just for Z tokens. Okay, so if there ever comes a time where I want to donate, uh, join, take part in a donation contest in the future, that'll probably take like what? Uh, I would say realistically take. You, I'll probably need another two years time in order to build up enough Z tokens for selling all uh, before I can like reasonably get top 15 for any Z token donation contest. So yeah, I'll probably have to wait till like two years later. Then I can sell off all my houses and you know take part and try to win a token donation contest. Not now though because now if I were to do it, I probably have to spend more money which is what I do not want. Okay, I mean there's no reason for me to spend any more on this game since I literally have everything that I need. Also, you guys are saying uh, I should go ahead and get the... What do you call it? Uh, what was that? Oh yeah, the Fire Dragon Talon. I asked you guys in a previous video, you guys would like me to get the imbues and uh, looks like you guys do want to see me get it, which I will be getting, but I will wait till Black Friday before I get it, uh, just so I can take advantage of the discount. Like, there's no rush for me to get it now, since it's not a limited item, but I will be picking up all the imbue spells when Black Friday comes around. Also, on uh, uh, another Z token spending news, the Zfinity Gauntlets should be coming back soon. Hopefully with the release of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings movie, hopefully we'll see the Zfinity Gauntlets return. I think I have like three out of the five Gauntlets or something like that. So yeah, I'll be picking up the other two, not because I need them, but just because they are pretty decent. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and get them, right? Because what else am I supposed to do with all these tokens, okay? Ooh, this one has quite a lot of health for his level, huh? Okay, so we are going to need to use, no, not Prime Chaos Hop, sorry, Pixel Eater. Oh, not enough, alright. Essence Hop now, and then Pixel Eater some more. It should be more than enough, Blood Flow. I think I'll probably need another turn. Yeah, I'm going to need one more turn to kill him. Should get a full heal after this, right? <coughs> Yep. Seize power. Charisma. Oh, it's a different stat every time. Wow, we are very, very lucky the rolls today. What is with all these ridiculously high rolls? Oh, so it's not the same stat every time you choose it. It's a different stat. Okay, so we've seen endurance, we've seen intelligence, we've seen charisma. I think there's luck as well. I don't know if there's strength or dexterity. I don't think I've seen those two stats being used. Let me know down in the comments below. Are those two stats even used? Or is just endurance, uh, intelligence, uh, and charisma. Okay, and luck. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's luck. Okay, so this is number 14. After this, we should be able to see the story quest. <coughs> nice Z tokens. Wow, I think we are going to hit our daily cap of 50 pretty soon, which is nice. I have not been farming for the daily 50 cap every day, but uh, if you are free to play player, I'll highly recommend you to go ahead and try and farm for the 50 daily Z tokens that you can get. Because those do add up in the long run, like if you think about it, 50 Z tokens per day, 365 days a year, that adds up to like what? 15,000 Z tokens, right? If my maths is correct, is it 1,000? No, 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 not 1,500. Yeah, 15,000 Z tokens in one year if you religiously farm for the 50 every single day. That is a lot of Z tokens. And the discounted Z token prices, the change that was introduced quite a few years back, okay, 15,000 Z tokens can get you like what? 
uh, three to four Z token items. Yeah, I think it's like four Z token items. So that is pretty insane, guys. Would we'll definitely recommend everyone to go ahead and do it if you don't have it already. Insta success, nice. Natural hundred. Wow, this is some amazing luck we have right here today. Very very nice. You roll rule. Of course I do. But uh, another thing that I have issue with is why is the why are the rolls so ridiculously high? Like I'm sure the rolls don't scale to your level, right? But are you guys seeing that 97, 96 rolls for necromancer class and this class is and the monsters here are like level hundred. Okay, they are around the level 100 range. Are you expected to get such high of a roll at level 100? That's pretty ridiculous to me. Like, oh man. Like, if you're not max level, I think you probably have trouble winning the roll. But why is the roll so high? Is this intentional or is this like not supposed to be that high? Finally, okay. Now for the story quest. If your next plan involves bait, we are switching roles this time. Surely you can't blame me for putting your improvisation skills to good use. You found the shortest possible route to cement the infighting between our enemies. The Scythe and Shadow Mentals aren't going to get along anytime soon, which means we don't need to provoke individual in incidents anymore. It would have still been a smoother run if you told me about the cursed artifacts. Oh, definitely, but there would have been less potential gain if we had waited. The Scythe leader starting to snag Liminal Mental members to try and personally break them is a major betrayal on its own. But we need both rivals to weaken each other before the liminal mental takes either one down so that neither can take the chance to overpower the archive's guardians. You've ensured they'll both lack coordination. Not only that, they specifically lost it when their last direction was turning on each other. Now we can have enough mayhem to cover for taking away their minion advantage and the setup for our final preparation. It's time to capitalize on the influence we've built within the liminal mental, to convince everyone who has been hunting for a conspiracy to join one instead. If anyone can help me redeem them, it's you. Shall we? Okay, let's go. I am ready. Oh. This was for the uh, caption contest that would happen on the forums just a while back. Okay, so this one and the face of a woman. I'm not sure who that woman was. Okay, the ghostly face of the woman. Uh, you were asked to go ahead and come up with a witty caption for that and the winners would get the woman's face as a reward or something like that if I'm not wrong. I think there's also like a uh, small amount of Z tokens for the winner. I, I don't know about the Z tokens part, but I know for sure we got a custom face as the reward. So there were three categories, namely humor, tragedy, as well as comedy. I submitted all three. Unfortunately, I did not win, but that's totally fine. Okay. Uh, I think most of them can be linked to comedy and comedy and tragedy sort of. The lines were a little blurry between comedy and tragedy, in my opinion, because... <laughs> tra Sad things in this game are usually quite funny as well. That's that's kind of messed up if you think about it, but yeah. Okay, anyways, I did not win the caption contest, but if you guys are part of the Gox Tavern Discord, you can also, uh, and if you guys search it out, I also did submit a few other entries there, which I did not include in the caption contest since there was only one submission per category per person. You guys can also go onto the forums if you guys would like to see the submission, the official submission that I made for the contest, okay? And of course, the submissions of all the other winners as well. So congrats to all the winners for winning that, okay? Sorry I'm late. I will not finding more possible recruits than expected. Huh, why are you uncloaked? <clears throat> Because as much as I'm trying to do this with the least possible bloodshed, if anyone other than you had walked into this storage, I would have killed them where they stood. What happened? Nothing we hadn't suspected. It just hits differently when working up close. This is where the inner circle keeps the council guards. I got an unlocking spell out of a disgruntled member. The liminal mental guards their stronger minions well. They're the only age they've got over the num over the others, other than numbers, what with not getting involved in the wars or the rush for new power. However, most of these aren't maintained by their magic, not anymore for some, and others clearly never were. Lords, you're right, there's no connection to an artifact or source, but this this is a this is like a curse. Nothing but commands and torment, and the trigger is the same we've seen around here. This is Scythe Mental Magic. She doesn't even have a voice, just enough sensory input to have better responses than a golem or mindless minion, but the soul is barely more than a battery for a battle troll. This entire existence is torture. It will be a lot more work to free them. Not needing a link means that their masters won't notice until they try to command them. Unless we... Ugh. This feels horrible. 
unless we leave just enough of the curse for them to feel the torment that makes them follow orders. The castle will still feel like it worked. They've got they get to defy orders, but it'll be awful until they are free. It's not like we have a choice. We can't march them out of here unnoticed, but she should have a choice. They all should. You work on half of them. I'll free the rest. We can ask for their help. Wow, this is pretty dark and disturbing. Holy crap. <laughs> oh man. Wow, this this is kind of dark for AQ, not gonna lie. I mean, DFX has explored pretty dark teams in Book 3, but yeah. I guess it's AQ's turn now. Uh, all along, I never felt that AQ was dark in any way, even when we are dealing with like important stuff with the like the Devourer, like us turning into war. It was never really a dark team. It was more of like a very serious team, but not dark, that's for sure. This one, little dark. Uh, but I can appreciate that since this is the Necromancer storyline after all, right? I'll help any of them who want to move on. The sabotage will burn my cover, but I'll help you from the shadows from now on. I'll get the recruits organized for the final move. Sai, let's get started. After posting sentries and making sure that no one will disturb you, you spend the remainder of the day locked in the crudely named guard storage room. After the comparatively easier task of freeing the undead animated by older methods of necromancy, you begin the arduous task of altering the curse binding those trapped by the scythe mantle. The hours and pressure weigh on the two of you. Enchantment, enchantments and curses are even more difficult to alter than they are to simply undo. In this case, the task is neither safe for the arcane process nor the caster. Substituting the effects with a re with a reanimation based on your own anima powered method, strengthening each captive so until they're prepared to break their curse on your queue. Soothing those that choose to move on is arduous, especially given the need to do so quietly. Even with your combined arcane knowledge, Kaylee and you have to take turns and split tasks so just so that the exertion and time pressure don't endanger your lives. In the end, a surprising amount of souls consider remaining. Rallying behind the charisma of an immoral knight, Dame Olivia. Long past midnight, you have finally organized those who remain as this fallen defender of Granomore makes her own choice. Ah, yeah, that's the name of the woman, Dame Olivia. She's an immoral knight. Okay. Yep. And yes, this is the image for the caption contest. The one with Dame Olivia over here and this uh, skeleton over here. Oh, and this is apparently her body. Yeah. Pretty disturbing. I did not know this when I first saw the caption co the picture for the caption contest i don't know if it was explicitly stated or maybe it's just because i didn't read in between the lines or didn't read very very carefully but either way yeah i did not know that this was actually her body okay that gives me a lot more ideas for comedic captions but <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i am a bad person i am a bad bad person anyways Yes, I do remember. I could do nothing but watch and remember. As I hurt my own people and fought for evil, remembering is what kept me here. I remember my friends, I remember my oath. I remember you asking me if I was sure I wanted to swear my oath. You knew my family only had me. I remember my little brother's alchemy books, actual books being paid for on your orders. I remember Korriban. Oh, she knows us? Okay. An enemy and a hero. Oh, I wonder if this dialogue would have been different if your night faction was different. Right now, I am a Storm Fallen Knight, so technically the Immoral Knights are our enemy, whether it's in the old storyline or whether it's in the new storyline. So they are tech Immoral Knights are technically not good people because they are working uh, with necromancers uh, under the table to go ahead and, you know, profit off something. I, I'm not really sure what, what it is. Wait, let me see. I think it's... Uh, they are reanimating undead just so the Immoral Knights have something to fight and defend Granomore for. If I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me on that, yeah. Okay, an enemy and a hero. I remember that painful, beautiful contradiction. That paradox was the ins inspiration for my last time. For that example, for my oath and family, I'll help you, with, I'll help you, I will be deathless. Those who stole my undead, those that sold it out, those who didn't want any part in such evil, I'll help you tell them apart. I know more than their voices and their footsteps. I know their souls. Okay, so what, did she become our undead minion? Huh. Wait, is Kaylee Obsidia the un... Wait, what Kaylee Obsidia? Is Dame Olivia the undead minion that we have inside our necromancer cloak? That's pretty disturbing if she is, huh? I guess you can think of it sort of like Pokemon. That's probably a bad analogy, but yeah, 
imagine uh she's like Pikachu and you're like Ash Ketchum and she's sitting on your shoulder not not sitting on your shoulder in this case but following you around wherever you go like a pet that you can order and command to attack your enemies that's what it reminds me of oh my god <laughs> still a kid friendly channel guys okay 98 oh man 996 sp yep we'll do that the example what is it called the example huh very weird naming uh nomenclature but okay yeah why is it called the example i don't get it am i missing some sort of inside joke here let me know down in the comments below why is it called the example <coughs> There should be some sort of a boss fight, right? Steve, okay. Yeah, very, very weird names. Now we got Steve. This guy has a mana shield as well. Huh. Okay, I think you have to play this a little bit more safe. Strawberry shield cake. Weak to darkness. So we'll do Safiria's knee board. We can do, uh, no, let's do Pixel Eater to make sure our guests can continue to be up. Okay, 110%. Yep, that's fine. Let's take this away. Let's just... Pets Darkness, huh? Okay, let's hit him with the Twilight's Harbinger. The first hit did 700 something, right? Yeah, where did the damage disparity come from? I have no idea. He two misses, that's good. Charming Strike, nice. That's very rampant trial dealt That's every rampant trial dealt with. Not as big as a deal as a security report said, but we can use the incidents to justify deploying this big of a team. Oh, by the way, this armor, super duper cool with the sword hanging behind you. Man. Can we can we get an armor like this? This I find this armor extremely cool, especially if you when you have the sword, the giant sword sheath to the back. It'll be a hard sell if anyone saw you kick that much butt. But I'm more of an issue with putting so many of us in one room. That's like begging for a shadow ploy. It might as well be bait for them, but don't be silly. This room is clear of magic other than scrying interference, and the others can't take whole groups of us. Pa, they've looked down on us since before the other mentals died out. I've lost count of how many Generations of them saw us as their cage for those with less necromantic talent. Yeah, too good to be a minion. They push you onto us. Join us of your own will. Strictly out for the knowledge. Sucks to be you regardless. You still have to deal with them. So I'm all for payback, especially now that we've been getting actually usable information. But how are we going to use the home advantage when we are also a splinter group now? That's what I want to know. Scythe and Shadow get tricked into fighting each other. Okay, good. We can work with that. But they, can, they each also want to take us down before it's done. And the circle... So complacent that they are complicit, they might as well be a third enemy that we have to hide from. But I can't actually do anything about The mental might as well be a prison while they, they live. I couldn't have put it better myself. They are complicit. The Scythe Mentals trial will be a sham, but the part about not being able to do anything about them, don't undersell yourself. A few of the inner circle can be trusted, like you. They are scholars that were pressed in or made a terrible mistake. They fought their way to the top. The, the others, you can take them. What's with the second person? Wait, hold up. Taking on our leaders and most of our own mental, we can barely keep the archive peaceful for a consecutive week. How will we even do that? Become necromancers, real necromancers. You all held up for this long without giving in to the packs and regular shortcuts that your lessons pursue. You've proven your integrity. You sound awfully like you're about to offer a shortcut to power yourself. That or you're one of the leaders you are waiting to meet. Alright, that's it. Who are you? Zap post. It is a trap. I can't believe I'm saying this, but no, no it's not. Everyone settle down, he isn't attacking, and if anyone has a right to turn on us, it's Obsidia. But it was you doing this all along, right? You all know my reputation, but after working with us all this time, now you know who I am. I don't need this mask anymore, and if you're willing to try necromancy without oppression, neither do you. Your, ne your enemies turn their own trial into a trap. The leaders that betrayed you let them seize your guardians. We have freed those guards, and many chose to help. Now we do the same for you. I don't ask for loyalty, I welcome you as students and only ask that you carry yourselves like scholars, not tyrants. Even then, you will be free to make your own path. Are you with us? We are in. Wow, okay. That was easy. I was expecting a boss fight. Guess not. 
Nice. Okay, now to go ahead and check out the very exciting Necromancer armor, finally. And my prediction, pretty on point, about how long everything would take. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let's do Necromancer Cloak. Let's bring this up. Okay, so I have the best stat build for Necromancer, I believe, which is a Beast Mage build. You can, of course, use Necromancer in any build that you choose, but this is uh, the build that I'm currently running. All right. So armor, we'll bring this out. Let's take away all of the other stuff so we can really see the armor for what it is. Let's take Doomquake away. Alright, so I'll be sure to go through all the skills one by one in case I miss out on anything. Oops, not this. Okay, this one doesn't have any others. Okay. Uh, expertise, passive skill, fear. Searing fear, level 6. Level 12. Okay, primal fear. Okay, this one I need SP. Oh, okay, so let's get some SP first. Weapons. We'll use a weapon that doesn't have a special. Let's do uh Safira Kneebot, yeah. Let's take this away. Let's see how much damage it does unboosted, okay? Primal Fear. Some enemies do not fear them. They will still fear this spell when you dim their soul for long enough to wreak havoc on their body. Uses intelligence, charisma, and luck for damage and effects. So I do not have luck. I guess intelligence... Uh, I guess if I shifted my dexterity to luck, that this would have been a better build for Necromancer, but... Yeah, I would like some dexterity to make sure that I can land all my hits. Okay, so let's do Primal Fear now. So it does harm damage. Very cool. Definitely visions terrify your opponent. Okay, so 50% chance of being unable to act. I'm not sure if this is based on level or based on your stats or based on the monster's resist. But then again, all monsters don't really have harm resist. So I guess it's not so much on resist. Maybe it's on stats, so yeah, 50% chance, really good, by the way. Grievous Weave. Uh, Rending Chill. Leave your foes chill and bloody. So now we have Rending Weave, okay, nice. Anima Ward. This one, passive skill. Race Skeleton. It's called Deathless Draco Leash. Ah, an ally undead dragon and powered by your necromancy does bonus darkness damage to foes you have inflicted with fear or bleeding. They can also seek between fire and darkness for burning attacks. Nice. Okay, let's look at the art. Ooh, okay. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It's like it has a, some sort of like a jelly around it. I would have preferred it to just be like the artwork of the standard Draco Leash but make it like ghostly. Like maybe turn the opacity down to 50% something like that I would have preferred that over this thing cause it's sort of this one just looks like it has a, like a weird jelly over it which is kind of weird in, in my opinion but you know that's just me okay 131 okay uh, attack with his breath weapon burning or fall with dark or fire damage ooh let's do okay it has a breath attack as well so let's try out the breath attack Four is covered in necrotic flames okay power 5 duration 1 does it stack? Let's see. 7.5. Okay, so the power definitely stacks. I forgot to see how much damage it does. Okay. Darkness damage, 268.75. Okay, let's see how high this can stack. <clears throat> uh, it's okay, but it's sadly locked to the darkness element. I will assume that uh, the fire version will do fire damage instead of darkness. So, yeah. So it defaults to darkness if the enemy has similar resistance for both fire and dark. Okay, next up, Wraith Work. Okay, uh, this one is not ready yet. Absorb Hexes. Okay, why do I keep doing this? This one does nothing. Uh, let's see. Death Walker. Oh yeah, by the way, they changed Death Walker. A lot of changes since I last went through it. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly what it does, okay, but you can become Death Walker anytime now, the moment you have enough um, anima stored, okay, so yeah, you can become Death Walker anytime now, you don't have to wait until you die, and you gain mana on the normal attacks as well. What other changes are there? I can't really remember. We'll check it out later, okay? Because we can't build anima against this one, but we'll check this out later. For passive, you can hold up to 50 charges. Additional charges becoming 
Bonus MP upon entering Death Walker. Charge Death Walker more quickly by paying dollar SP per turn. You currently have dollar charges charges. Okay, little bit. I guess the description isn't really fixed yet, but that's fine. And next one, Necromancer's Presence. Okay, Death's Resilience. This is a passive skill. Now, Grasp Essence. Kaylee's efficient method has taught you how reckless other casters can be. With the right curse, you can put their energy to better use. Let's see. So, first up, we have Consume Fear. <coughs> Foes who give in to fear are vulnerable to animal manipulation. By draining this effect, you can use their wasted energy to restore your body. So, uh, yeah, pretty weak here, but the enemy has no fear. Okay, so, if the enemy has no fear, then yeah, it, this is a pretty crappy skill to use okay so now we'll do now we'll try and inflict fear and let's see how much uh it can do okay so we'll do one round of fear first four four rounds 50 percent chance and we'll try and eat the fear to see how much uh we can get is it based on the potency of the fear or is it based on the number of turns the fear has left let's see let's do this again consume fear oh okay pretty large boost uh paralyze as well Hmm. Okay, now we'll try and stack more fear. Okay, we'll try and stack more fear. Let's see if we can get hi uh, higher numbers. Primal fear. We got the flames. Okay, let's gain some SP. Looming fear. Four rounds, 87.5% chance of being unable to act. Let's do one more. Oops. Let's do... Oh, the monster is probably going to be dead. Searing fear? Yeah, the monster is probably going to be dead before it can eat the fear. I think we still can. Okay, 82. Uh, that's unfortunate. Let's do... Grasp Essence, Consume Fear. Huh. It's not really based on potence, I guess. Still not doing a lot of damage. Somebody sent me a short clip. It was Enreal. I'll put the clip up here. Yeah. You guys can see how much damage he is doing. I mean, he has all the boosters. Okay, I will... I don't think I'll bother to go and try boosting it. But that is how much damage you can get out of the fear skill. I'm not sure what else I'm missing out though. Uh, yeah. Now let us continue with the testing. Okay, so that's Grasp Essence. Uh, three different skill, spell type skills. Okay. Consume Fear is a Fear Eater skill, does minus 62.5% plus 1.4 times times Fear Duration times Fear Chance. Monster Darkness Resist, blah blah blah. Use your HP equal to something something damage that. Oh yeah, forgot to see how much he healed me. Yeah, damn. Moves the Fear status from Monster. Okay, so we'll call away the... We'll call off the Deathless Draco Leech here. Let's see. Wraith work. Wait, no. Not Wraith work. Sorry. Wraith Skeleton. Let's call this away. Now, let's try and stack as much fear as we can. And then, we'll try and eat fear again without any boosters whatsoever. And let's see how much it can really do. Okay? <clears throat> uh, Fear. Searing fear now. Based off the monsters resist, huh? So we want to let's go ahead and do the what two? Five rounds. Okay, so the chance, the potency, as well as the number of turns both play an effect uh, as to how strong the skill will be. Let's do power gauntlet as well. Let's do crush. Oh, that was embarrassing. Okay, power gauntlet. Let's do crush. Nice. Let's do mix nuts as well. Wait, no. Shall we do mix nuts now? Okay, let's not do mix nuts now. Uh, let's try and fear again. 95% <coughs> 6 turns. Or 5 turns. Okay, maybe you should try and keep stacking. Yeah, let's try and keep stacking. Let's see how much we can really do. Okay, searing fear. 7 rounds, 96.4. Where's the burn? Where's the bleeding coming from? Oh, the rending and chilling weave. Okay, that's where it come from. Yeah. Primal fear. 
8 rounds. Okay, Primal Fear seems to do the least amount of damage, so we'll use that. Let's see, Primal Fear. Okay, uh, last one, ele Elemental Vulnerability. So we have to do the Eat Fear skill now. Consume Fear. Holy crap. Holy crap. Wow. Without Polala buffs too. And it's basically almost a full heal. This is insane. For the amount of da damage I'm doing. Yeah, it is a full heal. Oh my gosh. Wow, this, this is insane. Okay. Next up, we have Unravel Blood, Bleed Eater skill. Okay, so this one uh, eats your enemy, removes the bleed status, and is dependent on the bleed power as, spell, as well as expected bleed duration percentage damage. Okay, this one heals your MP and removes the bleed status. Unreleased so far, unlocks it. Oh, okay, it's not released yet. Sorry for that. Why did I even read that? Wait a minute. Hold up. Okay, maybe it was unreleased yesterday. Holy. Well, that's still crazy. That's still crazy. I assume it he uh, almost fully heals your MP too. Wow. Okay, so the info sub says it's unreleased, but it's already released right now. And what's the last one here? Well, I think maybe the last one was the unreleased one. Let's see. What's the last one? <clears throat> Red mana. Oh yeah, this is the last one. Sensing the subtle changes in a caster's enema, you can forcibly evacuate their mana buffer and turn it into a simple shield. So if I, my guess is right, you can damage your enemy's mana and then turn it into a mana shield. That's what I'm guessing, right? Huh. Nice. Okay, so the Bleed Eater and the Fear Eater. Very, very strong skills. Definitely love it. Right, Uh, next up, what else do we have here? Anima Attunement uh, Lead the soul and the body will follow Attuning the excess energy from your anima allows you to adapt to different combat situations without preparations So neutral Ooh. And then we can go full offense Wait no, this is full defense Sorry, what am I even reading? Oh, looks like it's usable once per battle, I think yeah, it's usable once per battle. So you have a neutral lean, you have a fully defensive lean, and you have a uh, spellcaster lean. Spellcaster lean, you automatically get it when you go inside of the leech form, I think. So yeah, not sure how I feel about the spellcaster lean, but a lot of people aren't happy with the spellcaster lean because of how weak it is and all that. Hmm. Okay, uh, to your armors, enhance... Enchantments to enhance your spell casting at the cost of defense and weapon offense. Okay. That's not out yet. Okay, uh next one. Haunting. Many hidden yet restless souls walk this world. With this spell I can reach out to more than most necromancers even suspect there are. Uh you have the option to choose six hits darkness, and come to damage, have MP cost. Dark haunting, this is your standard spell. It's just a standard darkness spell, and then you have Precise Haunting. This one is efficient. It's an efficient darkness spell. Okay, uh, only 167 MP. Very cheap. This one is 417. Okay, but this is not a max level armor. So I assume the max level one will cost a bit more MP. And then we have Grand Haunting. This one is your overcharge uh, spell type skill. Costs 1.4 times of your standard MP spell cost, but does extra 25% damage. Okay, so we are going to try out without any boosters. 250 intelligence. Let's see how much damage this does. 2, 3... Four, that's like four hits. Why did it say six hits? Hold up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's six. Okay, the numbers don't really appear all the time. Kind of weird, but okay. Not a lot of damage, but again, this is not the level 150 armor, so I can't really uh, judge the power skill based on that. The skill's power based on that. The artwork, I would say it's pretty simple, but it's not bad. I just wish the animation was a little bit faster because uh, the animation was kind of slow. But that's really my only gripe with it. Next up. Curse and Counter Curse. Your proficiency with hexes and baleful magics has expanded, similarly granting some minor inherent resistance against such effects. So it's a passive skill. Okay. Minus 2.5. No, not minus 2.5. Sorry. 
2.5 status resistance added to your death resilience status. 2.5 status potency added to your expertise skill. So we have 5 and then this adds another 2.5 so it's 7.5. Not a lot but it, if you add it up, it's something. It's not a lot but it's something. Which is better than nothing but I think if they make this any stronger, it would be borderline overpowered because keep in mind this is completely free you're not paying anything for this okay so that's why i think if they make it any stronger it probably it's probably going to be overpowered unless they introduce a cost to it whether it's a uh, sp cost or hp cost or mp cost all right last one spiritual amplification uh anima manipulation put towards positive ends can empower your spell casting and allies in ways the mental overlooked you can boost your spells damage for 83 sp Ooh, that's very cheap Plus 10% spell damage causes 0.2 times of standard MP cost in SP. Okay, uh, we have Anima Amplification. Ooh. Wait. Hold on. Is this not out yet? Oh, okay. Maybe it's not out yet. So there's supposed to be two more, I think. There's supposed to be two more. Okay, uh, Anima Amplification is... Plus 20% pet and gas damage causes 0.2 times of standard uh, MP cost in SP. So it causes SP to boost your pet and gas damage. And you have full amplification. You get extra 10% spell damage and 20% pet and gas damage causes 0.4 times of standard MP cost in SP. Huh. Oh, everything causes SP. Okay. But for some reason, I only have mana amplification here. Are uh, the others not released? How did he get this info sub then? Huh. So we only got a mana when one which increases our spell damage. Let's cast the spell here to check it out. Okay, anima. No, not this. Haunting. Yeah, very, very small damage boost, but I guess it's better than nothing. The MP cost is... How much is the MP cost again? I do not know. I probably have other toggles turned on. Let's see, 98, uh, is it even turned on? Is the toggle even turned on? Huh? Oh wait, it causes, uh, wait. Is this bug? Is it even taking my, M my SP? Hold up. Yeah, it's not costing any SP whatsoever. Why? Or does it only cost SP if you cast the spell? Hold up, let me check. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, I guess that's fair. Right, so it only takes away your SP if you cast a spell, which is nice, which means you can have this permanently turned on. There's no reason to turn it off. Okay, if you're casting spell, then you'll take away the SP. If you're not casting spell, then it doesn't, then it doesn't use your SP. Very nice, I like that. Okay, so I guess that's all. Now we'll go ahead and check out the uh, leech form. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, battle some monsters and hopefully we can build enough anima to get our leech form. Okay, so this is too low level. So we have to take, we have to flee and find another monster. <clears throat> Frost giant, perfect. Okay, shields. I'm not sure if you'll die to this. Uh, we'll do... What's my issue again? Shield of all. Yeah. Huh. Okay. His attacks are pretty weak. Which is good. For sure it's good. Charging Death Walker. Charming Strike. Very nice. Dazed. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter since we can still build Anima if you're dazed, right? <clears throat> 6 out of 10 charges, okay. And you can stack up to 50 charges. I'm going to try and stack all the way up to 50 to see uh, if having more more charges, charges give you more bonus MP. So we'll stack it all the way up to 50 and we won't use any MP to see uh, if this actually increases our MP bar or whatnot. Okay, or if it just heals your MP. Alright, so we'll do two testings. One, uh, at full charge to see if this uh, heal, 
increases our maximum amount of MP and the other one uh, we'll, we are going to spend some MP and then we'll go into Death Walker to see if it actually heals our MP instead. Alright. <coughs> so now we are going to flee because we don't want to die. Razor Claw. I think we can still build Anima against this guy, right? Uh, shields, let's do this one. Thirty charges. Okay, we got thirty charges now, so we need twenty more in order to reach the max number of charges. <clears throat> right. Let's see if we have enough charges now. Okay. Uh. <coughs> 42 charges okay so need 8 more <coughs> 2 more turns out to give us the 8 right I'm not I can't remember how many you gain per turn <coughs> 48 okay one more turn to get max number of charges and we'll test it out against this regular monster first and then We'll hop over to Combat Practice Trainer to test out against that. Okay. Become Death Walker. Okay, so it doesn't give me bonus MP. Fragile immunity still there. You can't switch out your armor forms. Yup, you still can't use potions. Okay. Uh death resilience. Everything else is the same. Spellcaster lean. Yep, still the same lean. Not a big fan of that. MRM pretty high though, considering this is not level 150. 55, 55, 65. <coughs> uh, uh, resistances. Uh, not, not fantastic. Oh, okay, but this is not max level resist. Right, so you, now you can use skills, okay. Undead Assault. Let's test this out. No buffs whatsoever. Ooh. Very nice. I will put a link. Uh, and will send me this short clip. You guys can check out and see how much damage this move can do if, if you have everything boosted. Next up, Terra. This one not unlocked yet. 417 MP. Class skill level 16. Chill your foe to the bone with a magical torrent that may freeze them where they stand. Okay. Horror. In your empowered state, you don't need to choose how to best terrify your opponent. Embody the fear of death and let the dread loose as fire darkness or harm. Okay, Element Seeking. Wow, very nice. Death Resilience. This one, passive. Expertise, passive. This one, passive. This one is passive as well. Okay. So, you still get all of the passives from that. And it's supposed to heal your MP, right? 2101. Huh. Healed me a grand total of 10 MP. <coughs> Wait, maybe it's cause I'm doing low damage. Hold up. Let's try with a fire weapon. Oh no, I can't use this. Foam finger. Okay, heals based off the damage you dealt, but yeah, that is not great at all. Not great. Okay, the healing is very minimal. Almost non-existent if you ask me. So yeah, the healing is kind of useless i guess you can help it survive help you survive for just a teeny bit longer but yeah it's very insignificant the mp healing which is okay i guess oh and you do use up all 50 of your charges okay huh <clears throat> okay so now let us go ahead and build more defiance no not defiance <laughs> that's paladin Let's go ahead and build more anima and then we will use some MP as well to see if it actually heals your MP, okay? So use Eclipse Dragonlord's will. Let's get started. Skills. Where's my Death Walker? Charging, okay. <clears throat> Let me cast some spells here and use some MP. Uh, Haunting, Dark Haunting. 
Okay, maybe I should use a bit more MP just to see how far, how much it can really heal us, okay? Dark Haunting again. Ah, uh, wait, I'm probably better off if I drain my MP using a regular spell. Yep, what am I thinking? Skin some SP. Okay, 492 MP. Okay, this should be far enough. Foam finger. Take this away. <clears throat> now, let's see how much anima have we built up already. <clears throat> 16. So let's continue. I want to build up to 50 to see how, how much it really does. So it takes up all of your anima in one go. It doesn't matter how many you have, but you do need a minimum of 10 in order to get it to work. So yeah, you need at least 10 anima uh, in order to go into Death Walker form. The good news is at least you can switch out of it at any time, which is nice. 125, I don't think this is high level enough, so we are going to flee. Paladin Artillery, nope, this is too low level either. Uh, yep. Flee. Superlative hour level 132. Is this high level enough? Okay, let's see how much we have here. Shields will switch back to haunted. Nineteen. Okay, we have nineteen now. <clears throat> Yep, okay, we are building uh, 3 per turn. Yep, that's a little bit slow if you ask me. 3 per turn, but it is what it is. Oh, I shouldn't have healed. Yeah, why did I heal? Oh god. Okay, I guess I can use the MP before I do before I go into Death Walker. Yep. So if you die in this armor, then you just die, right? You don't go into Death Walker form, but you can go into Death Walker form anytime before you die. So they sort of change this up a little bit, which I guess is kind of nice since it's not really useful if you die and then go inside Death Walker form, right? I also don't know if you lose charges if you die halfway, but I don't want to try that. 40 charges, okay. We need about 4 more turns in order to get max amount of charges. Let's run away. Who will be my next victim? Mythical warrior. Okay, so it's you. Shield, strawberry shield cake. Let's get this started. Man, this guy hits like a truck. Yeah, we probably have to fight something else or we are going to die. Trigoras, level 112. Come on. Don't do this. At least we got to go first. Please, level 145. Okay, we'll take this. Bun Bozo. Uh, yeah, this guy will hit with a bunch of different elements, right? A light first, okay. So let's see here. Let's use... No, let's flee against this guy because I think we will get destroyed. Let me find something that doesn't hit like a truck. Come on, man. Van Beast. Okay, this one hits with darkness, so we should be good with this one. Yep. 2,700. Nah, it doesn't have a lot of HP for us to try stuff out on, but I guess it's good enough. Wait. 46 charges now. Now it should be 49, right? So we need one more turn. <coughs> Okay, 50 charges. Now, wait, before we do that, let me go ahead and cast a spell or something. Let's cast another spell. I think we'll cast one more. I don't think it should heal us that much MP, right? 
Maybe I'm overestimating the heal, but we'll see. Okay, 673 MP left. Okay, so now we'll go inside of the Deathwalker form. Full heal. Okay, so it's a full heal regardless, I think. Or is it based off your amount of HP as well? Wow, I, I am really unsure. Is it based off your amount of HP? Does your HP get added to your MP as well? I really have no idea, guys. Absolutely no idea at all. Huh. Okay, but can we change back? How do we change back now? Wait, you can't change back. You can't change back. Hold up. Okay, so I was mistaken. You can't change back to your necromancer form after you go into your lead into your death walker form, but once you flee the battle Once you flee the battle you go back to your regular armor. Um how do I feel about this? Okay, so right now there's still no reason for you to go into your death walker form. As opposed to your regular necromancer form because it locks you out of so many things. Potions, it takes out a chunk of your HP. You're stuck with two resource bars instead of three. And the spell castling is kind of crappy. So why would anyone want to use Deathwalker form right now? Since you can't switch back until the end of the battle. Like you have your other mage forms for bursting if you really want to burst. You have generalist's ropes if you're free to play player, if you want to burst. So what is the purpose of Deathwalker form? Right now, I think it's still trying to find its niche, somewhere where it can fit in. But yeah, Deathwalker form, still not in a very good place right now. I like the changes so far, but a lot more still needs to be done in order for people to want to use Deathwalker form or to give people enough reason to use the Deathwalker form. Because right now, I, I see absolutely no reason at all why you want to use Deathwalker form. Okay, so that's my review so far on the Necromancer class. Skills 11 to 15. All in all, I really like the Fear and the uh, the Fear Eater as well as the Bleed Eater skills. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and of course, subscribe to this channel. If you guys would like to see more of such future content, till the next time, I'm your host, Corban Gaming. Peace out.